What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at FTP, but this time using Spectre's exploit, because Spectre's exploit now has an FTP payload that you can load, which is going to be a lot better than the current FTP that we've been using with the Blu-ray disc with Slayer's Gorvi's exploit, mainly because of course Spectre's exploit is more stable, so you have a better chance of success when loading the FTP payload. Also, you can now dump your PS5 disc games, which we'll be taking a look at, because of course with the Blu-ray disc exploit, you had to have the Blu-ray disc to run the exploit inserted into the console, which essentially stopped you from putting in a PS5 game to be able to dump it. But we don't have such issues with Spectre's exploit since it uses the WebKit to load the exploit and not a Blu-ray disc. Also, this FTP payload should work for 4.50 and 4.51 firmwares on the PS5 as well. So yeah, there's a good few benefits to using this version of FTP. So we're going to head into settings. We're going to head down to system, system software and console information. So after the first dash is your firmware version. So you can see I'm on 04.03, which is 4.03. And you can follow this on 04.03 or 04.50 or 04.51 firmwares should work just fine for this also make sure that you have download update files and install update files automatically both unchecked and then we should be good to go so in order to dump the games you do want to enter the game disc and then run the game first of all so we'll run ratchet and clank rift apart and try and dump this game i'll just tell it to update later i'm just on the base version of the game at the moment okay so then of course once we get into the actual start screen or the main menu we're just going to hit the ps button to exit and head to the home page or just hold down the PS button to get back to the home page. And then all we need to do is run the exploit. So if you followed my last video, which showed you how to set up the notifications so that you could load the exploit from a notification, and you can load any web page you want straight from the notifications here to actually load the exploit, as you can see. So you can do it that way if you have that set up. But if you haven't followed that video and you don't have that set up, then you'll have to go into the settings and go down to the network settings go to settings, set up an internet connection, select your Wi-Fi network or your wired network, whichever one you're connected to, and press the options button and go to advanced settings. From there, we're going to go down to DNS settings and set it to a manual DNS, and then change the primary DNS to either 165.227.83.145, just like this, or you can use 192.241.221.79. Either one of those IP addresses should work. You click OK, and you get connected up to your network. Once you're connected, you can then go to the user guide and that should take you to Al Azov's DNS right here, where you can hit the left trigger twice and then go up to the URL redirector and then go to the website es7in1.site and then hit submit. And then you can go over to PS5 and run the get debug settings. Now it might take longer because we have the game running in the background but as you can see there it has loaded so we've got launching elf loader on port 9020 so at this point we're going to switch over to our computer and on the computer you're going to want to download the ftp payload here for the ps5 for specter's exploit so this comes from uh, zeko shao and you know it's also been a kind of collaborative effort with sistro and chendo chap specter dev big boss and uh, Zerpy as well, who have all contributed to make this FTP payload for Spectre's exploit. So you also want to download an FTP client. So I'm using FileZilla, of course. You can, of course, do FTP within Windows itself, but it's generally not as good of an experience. So we're going to go ahead and get a payload injector as well. So I'm using Netcat GUI, which is my own payload injector. And essentially all you do is drag the payload inside and enter the port number as 9020. Enter your PS5's IP address into this box, and then we can just click Inject Payload. So I'm gonna click Inject Payload here, and on the PS5, when I click that button, you can see it comes up with that message, PS5 listening on your IP address and port 1337. So of course, from here, we can switch back over to the computer and run FileZilla or whatever FTP client you want to use. And then we're gonna type in the IP address into the host box. So the IP address of your PS5 and enter 1337 as the port number. So anyway, we're going to click quick connect to connect up to our PS5. 
And as you can see from here, we have access to the PS5's file system, just like we do with the BDJ exploit with Slayer's Gorvis one. It's exactly the same. And it's also the same in the sense that if you exit the WebKit, because of course we're still in this web page right here, if you exit this web page, you will lose connectivity on FTP and you'll have to reload the exploit again to run the exploit. So that is one slight benefit at the time of recording. Obviously, this payload may be updated to get better support with this kind of thing. But at the moment, that is one advantage that the BDJ exploit has over this one, which is that with the BDJ exploit with the Blu-ray disc, if you go back out to the home menu, yes, you'll get disconnected from FTP. But when you go back into the disc player again, it doesn't have to load the exploit again. It's already loaded. And then FTP will reconnect again once you go back into the disc player. Whereas with this exploit, as soon as you close out of the WebKit, you lose connectivity on FileZilla and then you have to reload the whole exploit again and re-inject the payload to reconnect on FTP. So that's one disadvantage of this version of FTP compared to the Blu-ray disc version. However, the advantage of this one is the, the exploit's a lot more stable. So getting the exploit running and getting FTP up and running is generally a lot easier with this exploit. So there are some pros and cons to both methods. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive in here. So for dumping PS4 games, because Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is still running in the background, it will still be loaded, the game files will still be loaded into the sandbox directory. So I can go into the MNT folder and I can go into the sandbox folder and then I can go into PFS MMT and then there you go. So PPSA 01474. That is the title ID of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So you've got the app zero. Of course, if I had a game update installed, you would also have a dash patch zero folder, which would be the game update files. So in this case, we just go into the app zero for the main game. And here's all the game files here for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Okay, so before we try and copy these files out, one thing that you should consider doing here is going into the edit option on FileZilla if you are using FileZilla and going to settings and going down to FTP, so FTP section here, and checking the box to send FTP keep alive commands. So proper server does not require this, contact server administrator if you need this. Yeah, so this has happened on uh, the Blu-ray drive one. The server kind of times out as if it's been inactive for too long. So if you send these keep alive commands, it will stop the server from timing out essentially, which might not be needed with, with this version, this updated version but it's a good idea just to have it just in case. So you can enable this and click OK. We shouldn't have any issues of the transfer timing out potentially while we're trying to transfer large files like a whole game. So we're going to go ahead and create a new folder on the desktop here. I'm going to call this one Ratchet and Clank. And we're going to go ahead and copy all the files out or I could just copy this entire app zero directory to that folder. And as you can see, it's going ahead and copying the files right there. So the speed is uh, pretty fast at the moment because I am using a wired connection. I'm directly connected from my computer to my PS5 through a LAN cable. And then I'm using internet connection sharing to share the computer's internet connection with the PS5. So I can connect to the internet on the PS5. But whenever I transfer files from the computer to the PS5, I get very high speeds because it's just going directly down that LAN cable straight from one device to the other. So yeah, it's pretty fast. So even though it's pretty fast though, it's probably gonna take a long time to copy all of these files out. But this is essentially how you can copy or dump your PS5 games right now. Now, obviously we don't have a way to decrypt the eboot.bin or the other executable files in the dump. So this is only like a little baby step to being able to run your own backup games in future. Uh, so you can back them up here, back up the game files. We do, obviously, we don't have a way to decrypt the executables. We don't have a way to repackage the, the game files into an actual fake package file. And we don't have a way to run fake package files on the PS5 yet. So there's a lot of steps that have to evolve before we can actually run any of this, you know, backed up data. But, you know, at least you can back up your PS5 games now, not just the package files, but the actual raw game files themselves. So... Okay, so you can see it's failed here. It's not able to actually transfer any more of the files. It gets to a certain file and then it just fails to transfer that one. And then it just locks you out from basically accessing any more files on the system there, which is a bit weird. You can actually go back to the root directory and still access the hard drive. FTP is still running, but you can't go back into the PFS MNT directory or the D folder 
that contains all of the game files. So bit bit of a strange issue there. So it turns out after speaking to uh, Zeko Shao or Control Execute that essentially the problem is the language files, uh, which makes perfect sense since it is a language file that it's getting stuck on. So the issue is that I've got my PS5 in English, so it's only actually loading the English language files on the game. So even though the other files show up there, they're not actually included and therefore it's not able to actually copy them out to the computer. So I'm only going to be able to back up the game with the English language and none of the other language files. So let's give that a try anyway, see if we can actually back up the game with the English language if we exclude all of those other files, all of the other language files. So we'll go into the Ratchet and Clank folder. We'll copy all the files here that should be fine apart from the D folder where all of the game files are. We'll copy all of these files over first. And you can see they all copied over no problem. And then we'll create that D folder on our desktop. And then we'll go into the D folder here on the game and we'll look for any language specific files. So you can see ones showing up right here, the sound bank files. You've got these different extensions that represent different regions. So obviously the only one that's gonna work for me is the US one. So if we scroll down further, there's some more language files here. You can see this, these WEM files. So these are all language specific files. So we are only gonna be able to get the US version. So I'm gonna control A to highlight all of the files. And then I'm just going to exclude all of those uh, language files here. So we're just going to get rid of all of the ones that are not the correct language that my PS5 is currently running. So we'll get rid of all of those. We'll keep the US one. So that should be fine there. And then we'll go down to these files here and do the same thing. So I'm just holding down control and deselecting these files so that we just have the US ones. So that should hopefully work. So let's give this a try. We'll copy all these files over and hopefully it will not time out or crash because it's not able to actually transfer one of the files over. So if you were wanting to get a full dump of the game, including all of the language files, you would have to go through this tedious process of changing your locale or your system language in the PS5 settings and then reloading the game and then taking those individual language files for whatever language your PS5 is currently set for and then copying that over to the computer and then repeating the process for every single language uh, that there is a language file for in the game, uh, which is going to take a very long time. So it's probably best to just, you know, dump the version that corresponds to your language, especially if you don't plan on playing the game in any other languages anyway. It's not like we're able to actually, you know, run these backups anyway at this point. So that took a while, but we do have everything transferred over successfully now. We just had to not include those other language files and then everything else copied over just fine. So it's going to be a bit difficult to, you know, back up PS5 games in future because of this issue with the language files. Although maybe at some point in the future, once we have, you know, a full jailbreak, we'll probably get some kind of dumper payload that will automatically disclude those language files for you anyway, or have some kind of workaround. But uh, yeah, you can still back up your individual game files as long as you only select the language files that correspond to the language that your PS5 is set to. So we have successfully managed to back up Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart there. And obviously this is a new way of using FTP through the WebKit so that you don't have to use the Blu-ray drive exploit, which is a lot more unstable. You can now use this exploit to load an FTP payload and actually, you know, you can have much more success getting it running here given the improved stability. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.